welcome to our hangout this afternoon here. We are so excited today to be talking about this incredible project that we just completed called Dallas Hope, the story of three incredible cancer patients at Baylor Salmon's Cancer Center in Dallas, a project that started early in 2012 and has recently concluded with the airing of the three episodes on WFAA TV Channel 8 in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. My name is Tony Martinez. I'm the producer, director, co-producer, director of the uh, special series along with my partner Kevin Spivey. He couldn't be here today because he doesn't like talking on camera. So uh, I get to be here and, and really share this incredible project with you with some very uh, incredible people that I got to know this year that truly uh, changed my life and I don't think that is a, an overstatement at all. I want to talk to you about a, a project that really has uh, been so special just because of these people you're about to meet. I'd like to begin by introducing you to Dr. Alan Miller. He is the head of Baylor's Cancer Center. Dr. Miller, welcome to our hangout. Tell me a little bit about how this idea came about. Hey, Tony, how are you doing? I'm, I'm great. Good to see you. Good. Um, I guess I can't, I don't even remember how long ago it was. It was uh, several months back, probably uh, uh, in the spring sometime, that we started talking about this, this idea of really opening up uh, our, our cancer center and our hospital uh, to show the story of real people uh, going through uh, cancer care. And uh, initially, it took a lot of uh, a lot of thinking about it to to decide: is this something that uh, we really want to do or can do? Well, I mean, it was incredible that you had the foresight to to do this, and I think the doctors and nurses who we spoke with at Baylor also had to buy into this idea for it to truly work the way we wanted. Without the doctors and nurses, we couldn't have done this. And, and also here with us today is oncologist Dr. John Pippen, who treated Michelle. Dr. Pippen, welcome to our hangout. Talk to me a little bit about the experience of having the, uh, the cameras in, in the, the uh, patient's room when we're, we're talking about so, so many intimate uh, situations as, as we discussed during this, uh, the filming of this documentary. Well, hi, Tony. Thanks for having me on today. Absolutely. I had a few concerns also about the cameras being around, but, you know, I'm going to credit Michelle for sort of making this, the situation so much easier for me. Just talking to her was so easy. She was a brave cancer fighter, and I was able to focus on what I was doing, and the, the TV camera being in the room really didn't bother me so much. So no, I felt I like I was able to be myself, and she was too, and it was great. Well, you were, you were certainly a, a natural, and I felt like... Uh, Nothing about it felt like it was anything special. I, I got the sense this is what you do every day when you're when you're talking to your patients, and uh, you. certainly appreciated that that kind of access and authenticity that, that we got. Also uh, with us is Dr. Carlos Becerra. He's head of the Innovative Clinical Trials uh, Division at Baylor. Dr. Becerra, of course, one of our other patients was Bill Bradford, who has a follicular lymphoma. Talk to me a little bit about the Innovative Clinical Trial Center and the fact that you have a, a brand new location now to, to work from. Yes, um, Bill, uh, you know, as you probably have seen on the documentary, he uh, went through the, uh, one of our novel uh, personalized treatments uh, approaches for uh, uh, patients with different type of cancers. In his case, was the vaccine that was developed. Uh, from his cancer, specifically uh, for his needs, uh, and try to uh, boost up the immune system. Uh, that's a, a snippet of um, the uh, trials to come and what we're trying to accomplish here with the new Innovative uh, Clinical Trial Center here at the uh, 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 Salmon's uh, Cancer Center. So um, moving forward, um, we're going to have uh, Probably many more of these type of uh, studies available for our patients. Well, hang in there with me uh, for just a minute, Dr. Becerra, because I want to ask you specifically about Bill Bradford's trial and and maybe some things, some questions that he asked going forward. But before we get to that, let's uh, let's not uh, uh, wait any longer to introduce uh, one of the stars of the show. Michelle Burnt is joining us now from Fort Worth, and Michelle, what have people said about the final episode? Because we had this crazy idea to leave it sort of in limbo until people went to the website to, to check it out and see how you are. What was your reaction 
Michelle, to seeing the, the final episode. You and I have not talked about this. Well, I'll tell you what, it puts everything into perspective. It's, to say the least, been a long and tiring year. And, you know, you don't, halfway through, I forget the cameras were even there, and I forget what I really went through because you just try to get through day by day, let alone week, month, year. And so seeing myself sick in bed with, with no hair, no eyebrows, no eyelashes, I looked like I was on my deathbed and we just, you know, kind of stared at it like, did that really happen? <laughs> and especially looking at me now, I look happy, healthy and blessed because I am. And so it, it was good, but a lot of people contacted me by phone, email, Facebook saying, well, how are you now? You know, we, it just ended so abruptly. And I, you know, I said, go watch the epilogue. It's a happy ending. I'm doing well. I'm actually done with treatment, but it kind of left everyone thinking, you know, how's she doing? Well, I thought I thought again that Baylor was very very brave to to allow me to end the uh, the episode that way. One of the reasons we decided to do that was because while all of our three stories ended with what we can call a, a fairly happy ending, Bill Sharice uh, Daniels, our other patient from uh, Fort Worth, who who uh, was very sick at the beginning of of uh, the journey here, she's doing much better now. But we didn't want to leave this with the idea that cancer is something that everybody gets well from and is a happy ending for everyone. But, you know, you have to think uh, long and hard about how that would be received by everybody throughout the Baylor healthcare system. And, and again, I just am so thankful that they agreed to, uh, to allow me to finish uh, the documentary this way with, with this idea. Michelle, talk a little bit now about your current situation and, and how you're feeling and where you are in the process. I finished um, my radiation two weeks ago. I had 33 rounds of it. Um, radiation is one of those things that during radiation, you actually don't feel anything. You kind of just lay there. I would take a nap. And then afterwards, it kind of has a, a triple down effect. And so I lost all the skin in my armpit, um, some on my breast. It's, it burns your skin. It's like a, a severe sunburn. And then it just kept getting worse and worse. And finally, the skin was peeling off. It was kind of bloody in some spots. If you stretch too hard, um, it would break the skin. And so they put some burn cream on it. But I'm a very healthy person. Um, and it's been two weeks, and I'm almost completely healed already. So I just am to the point I feel I'm, I'm back to myself. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of getting used to getting used to things and getting back in the swing of things, you know, because my life doesn't slow down just because you have cancer. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Pippen, what is next now for, for Michelle? Well, I look forward to seeing Michelle get back to her old self, like she said. It's not going to be long. Uh, I think she's going to be out exercising and being a shining example to the other breast cancer survivors and be able to show other people, hey, I can do this. I can get through it. It's going to be tough, but I can do it. And I look forward to following her along with Dr. Grant, who's also featured in the, in the Hope Show. And we'll keep an eye on Michelle pretty closely. Uh, probably we'll see her quarterly now for the next couple of years. And just look forward to seeing her continue to blossom as a breast cancer survivor and be a great example to everyone. One of the interesting ideas that came out of the documentary, I thought, was when you label someone a survivor. I think Michelle asked you that in one of uh, her appointments early on after she'd had her surgery. And is, is there a way to define someone when they can actually be uh, qualified as a, a cancer survivor? Well, I think there's multiple definitions of survivor. I think for Michelle, she was one right when I first met her. She was a brave young lady that came in. We got a plan. We were ready to go. So I was, I was ready to call her a survivor on the first day I met her. <laughs> that's uh, you know, Tony, I think, I think that's changed over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was one point where we wouldn't say someone was a survivor until it was two oh. years or some other uh, benchmark like that. But I think what we've realized uh, lately is that being a survivor is as much a state of mind as it is a state of health. And that's why I think Dr. Pippin uh, realized that Michelle was a survivor from the beginning. And, and that state of mind will, will be showcased uh, in front of a number of people coming up here in early December. Michelle, why don't you tell us about uh, your, uh, your big uh, plans coming up here uh, December 1st? 
Well, I'll be competing in the, the Mrs. Texas pageant, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, you know, all these contestants have a passion, and it's they're called their platform. And, of course, mine was breast cancer. Um, even before I had it, my mother had it, grandmother had it, great-grandmother had it. And so it's something that's very dear to my heart. And, and what I want to do is, is win that crown not only to represent the great state of Texas, but to you know, share this journey with others. Because when people hear that big C word, the cancer word, they think it's a death sentence. And it's not. Dr. Miller says it perfectly. It's all in your state of mind. You can and will get through it. And so I just want to help people, you know, especially ones that are as young as myself, get mm -hmm. through it. And, and just to show them that you can. Life goes on. So tell us, uh, give a little plug for the pageant here, because certainly if people want to know how you do in that pageant, can you tell us a little bit more about when it's going to be and how they could find, find out the results? Absolutely. The website is mrstexas.net. Um, it's December 1st in Corsicana. So if anyone wants to come, they sell tickets at the door. I'd love to have a big crowd there. Um, we compete in evening gowns, swimsuit, and interview. Now the person who wins as Mrs. Texas will then go on to Mrs. America. Well, we, we certainly wish you the very best. That's going to be just an absolutely incredible opportunity to, to share your story and to really be able to articulate in, in greater detail you know, what this whole process has, has meant to you. On a, on a personal note uh, regarding Michelle, you know, I think it's really important for people who go through cancer to have a strong support team around them. Michelle's uh, mother and father were, were down from Iowa quite often, and Michelle may have the most incredible husband I've ever met, a guy who really gave of himself and, and was just tireless in, in just thinking about Michelle the whole time. So, Michelle, talk a little bit about Stephen and what he meant to your uh, you know, recovery. You know, that's interesting, Tony, because when I was watching one of the episodes, I couldn't remember if it was one or two, when we were pre-surgery getting ready and mom and dad were in there and Steven and, and Chris, I think, um, there's a shot of Steven and he's just staring forward like, mm -hmm. I don't even know what to do. Like, it's just that face. And then you realize you don't just go through cancer. Your friends and family go through it with you. So they need just as much support as what I did. And so a lot of times I would hide my emotions because I needed to be strong for them because I knew I could handle it, but I didn't know if everyone else could. So people would be like, gosh, you don't even look like you, ha you have cancer. You don't look sick. Oh, you'd be surprised what I can hide. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I would not have been as bright and bubbly through the whole process if it wasn't for mom and dad and Steven. I mean, I'm, I'm super blessed. But you know, your family and friends get credit, but it's the people behind the scenes that don't. Baylor saved my life. Okay, so I will forever be thankful to Dr. Grant, Dr. Carpenter, Dr. Pippin. Um, they were phenomenal doctors, and I think what's important for patients to know is even when the cameras were not rolling, they were supportive. They were calling me, even when I was in Houston, checking up on me. And Kevin and Tony, um, you know, at first you guys were my cameramen, and then you became friends that I'll have as part of my family forever. So I am very blessed because my circle of support has grown humongous. And that makes me know that, heaven forbid, if this cancer would ever come back or I have to face any other challenge in life, I'll be ready for it. You are so well spoken, Michelle. That, that's just incredible. Hang in there. I have a couple more things to, to ask you. But uh, Dr. Miller, especially regarding this idea of uh, the bedside manner and the way that the people work at Baylor, I, I couldn't have been more impressed with the way uh, the doctors worked with Michelle, with the way uh, Cynthia, your nurse, your head nurse navigator, really helped guide us through the process, not just uh, Michelle and our other patients, but, but myself and Kevin as we're entering this world of trying to figure out how we can shoot inside the hospital and, and making sure that, you know, that we're, we're following the right procedures and certainly not putting anybody in an uncomfortable situation. But I want to talk specifically, ask you, Dr. Miller, about how you hire these these great people at Baylor because it's not just about the medicine is it it's about hiring people who can really connect with each other well uh, before I address it I just want to tell you that I'm in awe of that young woman <laughs> she is fantastic so I came here to Baylor about four years ago and haven't hired many of these people they were here and they are why I came here I came to Baylor because of the reputation Baylor had for having this caring and compassionate 
way of treating people, but also doing it in the context of the most modern medicine, things like the Innovative Clinical Trials Center, and being able to bring to patients some, some of the latest treatments before they're available to, uh, to most people in general. So I came here because of that, as opposed to having, you know, uh, brought the people on. You know, Dr. Pippin, it was interesting to listen to you and your uh, analysis of, of Michelle's situation and talking with her. You especially were really very, uh, I would say, patient in trying to explain to her the loss of her hair, which she was most concerned about, and not throwing everything at her at once. Talk a little bit about this technique and, and whether or not this is something that is trained in school or you learn it through your personal experience as, as a physician. Well, I think you learn a lot on the job. Michelle and I were visiting before this uh, started. She was saying, wow, there's, doctors are not seeing me every day now. And that is sort of a part of the journey where we actually have her have a little bit of slack right now where she can go on out into the world on her own a little bit. And we've tried to bring her along with that. But I think our specialty society really helps uh, American Society of Clinical Oncology and their instruction that they give to the doctors. I've learned so much from my colleagues here at the Baylor Can Salmon's Cancer Center, how they interact with patients, and you sort of pick things up from uh, your colleagues, your patients, and um, your specialty society, and it's been very good for me, and I, I feel like I've learned a lot from all these sources over the years. Well, thank you. I wanted to thank you for, for your incredible help with us on the documentary and, and getting to know you a little bit better. Dr. Becerra, uh, we haven't left you out. I uh, wanted to spend a little bit of time uh, with you alone just talking about the Innovative Clinical Trials Center and how it relates to, to Bill. You know, we went to Spain where we saw how his vaccine was being created, how uh, we went to Germany to see exactly how the science works in creating this vaccine using the tobacco leaves. But for this conversation, the question is, Bill Bradford, have you found through his results that he is actually doing better because of the clinical trial, or is it too early for you to make the same assessment that uh, uh, Dr. Bendandi made from, uh, from uh, Spain? The, uh, the journey in, in cancer in general is a long journey. It doesn't, it doesn't end in any specific date. Um, for some type of tumors, it's fairly short. For others, it's fairly long. In this particular case, the journey is longer. Um, this is our uh, slow, slow growing tumors. Um, and not until many years have gone by will we eventually find out how effective the vaccine was. Um, we keep following our patients. Um, a lot of them for the rest of their lives because um, in some of these tumors um, they you never know when uh, when it's going to strike back and you got to be there for your patients. In, in Bill Bradford's case it, it was interesting to me that he actually physically just looked so much healthier by the end of the shooting that, than he did at the beginning. Is that just anecdotal information or, or is, is he actually doing, doing well in remission? So far he's doing very well. Uh, intermission uh, patients. Uh, um, when you you cancel your counsel your patients there, and uh, a lot of them uh, listen to your counseling, and they go into the mode of um, uh, improving the overall um, uh, health in the in the sense of uh, uh, exercising, uh, a little bit of diet control, and so on and so forth. That you know improves their, a little bit more their energy level and, and their outcome. Well, again, I want to thank you and your staff. They were just very patient with us. Trying to understand how these vaccines work uh, is quite uh, an intellectual experience that uh, ask an old sports guy to understand this stuff, and it got very complicated, but you, all, you and your team were, were very helpful in helping us be able to explain that down the, the pike, so to speak, to, to the layman. So thank you for that. I want to begin a final round of questions with you, Dr. Becerra, that basically the same question. What is your, what is your takeaway from, from the Dallas Hope experience? Um, it just, just um, it's at very many levels, but uh, I would say that um, 
it shows you the the power of the journey mm -hmm. and how close you are to your patients and how important not just we are for our patients but the patients are for us uh, it becomes a true bond um, and a journey that uh, takes many years in the making wow well again thank you very much uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to work with you Dr. Pippin same question what what do you think the takeaway is from from watching the uh, the three-part uh, series you know, Carla summed it up pretty well but for me just being reminded of what the patients themselves are having to go through and, and it was very good to see Michelle in her home and interacting with her family and the love and the caring they were providing to her and it, it sort of helped me uh, see things from another angle so to speak mm -hmm. and just seeing Michelle's personal uh, journey and all the things that are going on at home I think really helped me. Dr. Miller, would you would you do it again? Has it been a good enough experience that you that you can say this is uh, this is a opening a, a curtain to what happens inside a hospital that people need to see that this is something that uh, was uh, really uh, uh, an eye opener? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, Tony. You know, I think uh, Drs. Becerra and Pippin have summed up a lot of the things that I also feel. But I think one more thing is that this is like. Uh, taking a flashlight and shining it underneath the bed to show that there aren't any monsters there and to show what what the reality is and that people's fears are usually a lot worse than what the reality is so with a glimpse into these three very courageous uh, people's lives and what they went through with their treatment hope that other individuals now will be able to face the possibility that they have cancer with a lot less trepidation and uh, perhaps move forward and get those tests done or go to see uh, their physician uh, on, a, on, a, on a more regular basis. Absolutely. And finally, uh, Michelle, I think uh, that leads perfectly into your final thoughts because I know why you wanted to do this. You have that giving heart that says, what I'm going through, I want people to understand this so I can help others. But talk a little bit about how that really came to you know, head to head sometimes when it was really difficult to have the cameras around, yet you persevered and never once told us, please turn off the camera. In fact, we gave you the iPad and you were willing to shoot some things that were, were incredible and that we would not have been able to capture with, with myself or Kevin being in your home. So what's the takeaway for you after, uh, after this year-long experience? You know, I think it's it's the viewers of Dallas Hope that I knew would keep me going through the process. I had to do this for them. Um, even when the going got tough, I, I persevered for them. You know, it's, it's interesting because I truly feel that out of everything that bad happens in your life, something good comes from it. Cancer is not easy. It is not um, meant to be fun. It is one of the hardest things I hope I'll ever have to ever go through in life. Um, but good things come out of that. Um, I'm a new woman and I'm stronger, more confident. You know, I was telling my husband, I think there's two lives when you go through cancer. There's the life before cancer that your parents gave you. And there's the life after, Karen's, uh, after cancer that your fortune of God gave you. And I truly feel this second life is by all means better. Well, uh, Michelle, you're just an incredible spokesperson for cancer, for what you've done. And I also consider you a dear friend now. And so, you know, I just want people to know that when we work with, you, with patients like you and we do something like this, you can't help but become personally attached to them and, and their stories. So I love you so much and your family. And I just hope uh, that uh, everything goes well in the future. And, and best of luck to you in the, in the pageant coming up here uh, in December. Thank you. And thank you to Baylor as well. Absolutely. Uh, I want to thank uh, all the doctors for being, uh, you know, on with us today. It's such an opportunity here to, to thank them for, for their, you know, uh, trust in us to be able to, to tell these stories and to, for us to be able to share with you, uh, I, as Dr. Miller said, to share with you some very special stories that, that you might never know about and to know that if you ever are uh, in need of a place that deals with people and on a personal basis, Baylor is certainly uh, the place that, that I would certainly go and, and I'm certain that you would feel the same way especially after seeing this series. You know uh, for me 
2012 was really a very difficult year personally. I, I went through a divorce this year and uh, so difficult to, to deal with that after being married for over 20 years. And then I would look at Michelle and Bill and Charisse and, and see their struggles and think, my gosh, if they can go through that, I can deal with this. And so it's, it is amazing to me how, uh, how life works that uh, you're, given the, you're given these moments to see how strong you can be and to see how you can use the examples of others to, to make your life better. And so what goes around comes around. And so I'm just so thankful to be here today and to be able to have this group of people together to share with you uh, this great story. So th thanks to all of you and thanks to you for hanging out with us today here on Google. Talk to you next time.